Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at Sketcher and tangent constraints and what they are and what they can be used for. If you like this video please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So I'm going to jump over to the Sketcher to start this. First of all, go to the new document, new sketch, and I'm just going to keep it on the XY plane for this demonstration. So when we're looking at tangent constraints, we've automatically think about circles because a tangent is a straight line or plane that touches a curve or curved surface at a point. But if it's extended, it does not actually cross at that point. So for instance, if I take a circle here, like so, and I put a line in here and I make that constraint tangent to that circle. And that is by using the create a tangent constraint between two entities. Now remember, this is not just for circles. This can be used for most shapes. And I will get into that in a minute. So I'm just gonna press escape or, or click my right mouse button to get my points back. And I'm gonna select the circle and the line and place those with the create a tangent constraint between the two entities or I can come up to sketch, sketch constraints and come down to the constraint tangent on there. So this line is now tangent to that circle. You can see if I move the line up and down that circle will increase or decrease and if I try to move this line you can see as I move it, the line doesn't actually cross. It may connect, but it won't cross. So that's what a tangent constraint is. Now with this, we can do this on, on many objects, but what can it be used for? Well, this line, if I constrain the diameter of this circle, let's come into a constrained diameter, and give it something like 30 millimeters. So this won't actually increase in size. And you can see this circle keeps on that line. So if we've got any animations or anything, we can actually attach that circle to that line and follow that line. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on something like a B-spline or something like this. You can't actually attach the tangent constraint to this B-spline. I'll show you that now. So if I take the circle, place that in there. Now if I try to do a tangent constraint of that circle against that B-spline, then you end up with a message saying tangent to B-spline edge currently unsupported. So you can't do that. But we can use this for alignment, for our sketching when we're doing trimming and everything. And I'll show you some of the applications for that. So this line is tangent to this circle. Place another line on here and just gonna get the mouse point back, back by hitting escape. See, we can move this line and I'm gonna make that one tangent to the circle as well. So we're using the create tangent constraint. So those two lines are now tangent on that kind of circle. So what that means is that if I move these lines out then you can see that they keep in line with that circle. So if I move this one down, this one is in line with this edge, this one is in line this, with this edge. If you bring them in, you can see that this will actually intersect that circle. But if we move this up, it keeps in a nice curved point on that circle. So we don't get, if we were doing something something with a line that was actually attached by a point on line constraint, so click that point, click on that circle, and use this fixed point onto an object, then if we want this object to be like this curve here, you can see that we, can place this anywhere along this circle, but we lose that continuous flow 
along there. So we've got our lines that are tangent to that circle. So what can we do? Well, let me place these lines in parallel with each other. So I'm clicking these two lines and using the parallel constraint. That means when I turn these lines, they will go around that circle. And I'm gonna make these equal to each other as well. So we've got a quality constraint there. So they're the same size. And as you can see, we can move this up and down. But what we can do is pull these out. So these lines are now opposite this circle. So now if I move this down here, you can see, still see that these lines are opposite. So we can keep the items opposite to the circle or any shape we place in here. So if we're sketching and we're gonna, I'm not gonna use the square for this, I'm gonna use the polyline. You see the reason why, because I want to put some constraints on this polyline. Now, let's get rid of those vertical constraints by clicking on them and hitting delete. So this is mobile at the moment, but I want to restrict this to a square. And the reason why I haven't used a square like so is because I can only move this like in and out, up and down because of these constraints here. And if I started deleting these constraints, well then I've gone just back to the polyline anyway, this one here. So like so. So I'm using a polyline for this. And what I'm gonna do is make these two lines here and I'm gonna use a right angle or perpendicular constraint on those. So those are in right angle with each other. I'm gonna use these four lines and place those in a quality constraint. That means when I start moving this about, it is a square like so. I know we can increase the size. It all keeps in uniform with each other. And I'm just going to put a length on one of these lines. On this line here, I'm going to put a length. So I'm using the fixed length along the line. And we're going to say that's 60. So we've got our square that we can move about. Now say if I'm sketching and I want a number of these. So we're making some kind of vent or some kind of feature on here. And I want to take... So I've just highlighted that all. I'm going to hit Control C. And I'm just going to copy that a number of times. So I'll take that one and I'm going to take that one. Like so. So I've got these, but I want to keep these basically opposite each other. So like so. Or if they were turned this way, I want to keep them opposite each other going down this way. We can use that with tangent. So it's not just circles we're doing we're dealing with here. So I'm going to take this one of these two, let's just select those, and we're going to use the create a tangent constraint on there. So that's a tangent constraint that's been placed across those now. If I move them, you can see how they keep opposite each other. I know we can bring them in and out. They're still opposite each other, no matter where we move. So let's just bring this around this side, move this in and out push this up, push this down, bring this around. So that's showing you how that tangent constraint's working. And I'm gonna do the same with this top here and this top and use tangent constraint across those. So all those three now, if I move them, they will be, I haven't placed a height along here because I copied it from this one. So this one has a height and this one doesn't. So let's get rid of that. So when you copy and make sure you copy the one with the most constraints on there. So that one's got constraint and height. So click that one, the top and the top and do the tangent constraint across there. So that's better. So we can move these up and down. You can see how they keep opposite each other. The same if we put a circle in here, place a circle like so, and I'm going to select 
this top here and this circle place a tangent constraint along there let's restrict that diameter so 59 let's go for 60 along there so when these move now they're all as you can see all in line with each other so they're all opposite this one's opposite with this one this one's opposite with this one so we're all good there so that's one way of using that tangent constraint there I'll show you another example so one of the uses for this is to make smooth curves so between the endpoints so if we took a arc like so so I'm going to create an arc something like that we've got these two endpoints here hit escape place two lines in and what we're going to do is create a smooth connection between these two so I'm going to click this point and this point and use the tangent constraint along those and you can see when I start moving this how that stays smoothly between those and we'll do the same on this side and tangent along there and you can see how that smooth arc is kept with those lines and you can see that arcs changing as we're moving this line so we get this smooth continuous flow of this line here and this is the same between two arcs as well so if I create two arcs like so and another one like so what I'm going to do is bring this in just so they're close and click these two and create a tangent along those so like so and you can see how the S bend works there as well so we've got this smooth transition through this Another example of using the tangent constraint to build geometry is if I took two circles and placed them inside each other, like so. And what I want to do is create almost a horseshoe shape. So these are constrained to that center point there. I'm also going to constrain that to the center. Like so and I'm going to put some diameters on these. So this one about 200. This one we'll do at 100. So we've got this circle now. And we'll place another circle on here. And we'll use that to make a tangent constraint against these two. So click on the circle, clicking on the inner circle and using the tangent constraint and then doing the same for the outer circle. And that's constrained inside that circle. So that will run around that circle like so. Can then position it and I'm going to create another circle this side and do the same. So create the circle, place a tangent constraint against the center and a tangent constraint against the outer. We can then constrain these to be some distance apart. And if needs be, we can place some geometry on here as construction geometry. Change that to construction to keep that straight. Can we use the trim tool to remove the inner parts and the outer? And finally, this part here to create this U shape. So now we've got this, it's all constrained down. 
we can actually add holes in here using a very similar method. There's multiple ways to do this, but this is one way. So we create a circle and we constrain the circle with a tangent constraint against the outer and also against the inner. Then change that to construction mode. So construction geometry, place a circle within, this will be the hole. And then we can give that circle a diameter. And go for 20 millimeters there. So that circle, if we move that, you can see how we can place holes around that horseshoe shape. Just by duplicating that up. I'm going to take a copy of that and then place it within. The tangent constraints won't come across, so we'll have to add those tangent constraints in. Like so. So that's in there now. And if we want to, we could also add a tangent constraint against these two. Like so. So they will be the same distance apart, no matter where they are around that ring. I've now duplicated all those up in there. And if I try to move them, they'll all move in union. Let's close out the sketch, have a look what we've got. So this is what we've got. And I can come into the part design. Click on the sketch, add a body, X, Y plane, okay that. Sketch is inside the body. So we can click on the sketch and pad that up. And there we have the finished pad. Just by using tangents to produce this shape. Another example will be using two circles to make a moon shape. So we're using the outer and the inner of both circles. And to do that, we can place a circle down and then another circle and decide the shape that we want. So we're looking at this shape in here. And I'm thinking of something like a pig I'm gonna create with this. So I wanna curve these edges off here so I can place a circle in here. And again, make it tangent to the outside of this circle. And the inside of this circle. We can do some adjustments, but as you can see, we've got some problems with the circle starting to move. So we need to lock these down. So I'm just going to use a block constraint on these two. So I click on that circle, block constraint, click on this circle, block constraint. Therefore, when I move this, they will not move. So I can bring this into position. So I weren't going to place it. I might lock it to this line. So I'm going to use a point on line or point onto an object constraint there. And the same, just gonna copy this and go up and put the auto constraint on there. And do a tangent on this one and a tangent on the other. And then we can use our trim tool, come in Trim the inside, trim the outsides. And the same on this side. Also got this additional shape over here, which I don't want. And we can do some adjustments if we so desire. 
And again, if we want to take this shape and use the circle to make additional tangents inside, we can do that. And again, using the trend tool, I can remove parts of geometry as I so fit, see fit. Also remember that we can do it, instead of overlapping shapes, we can have them side by side as well. So we'll place a circle and another circle. Then any circles that we place inside like so in between that space we can do tangents across there and across this one sometimes you may get some problems when you start trimming so if I've got the trim tool selected and I come in here, you see this fail to trim edge, not able to trim curve with given index three. If you start getting that, then look elsewhere to trim first. So in this instance, I'll come outside to this circle here, select, I see something's changed here. So we'll click on that one again, that's removed. Now I can see if I can trim that and there it's trimmed. And we can do the same with the rest. The other one I want to show you is the one that uses free selections. Now this one uses two arcs and a point. And the best way to show you this is use the ellipse tool. So if we come over here, we've got a drop down here. We've got a lips by center, major radius. We'll use that one. And we'll just make an ellipse in here. Like so. And you can see we've got a point here, which is part of the construction geometry, and we've got this ellipse here. So I'm just going to add some arbitrary lengths to this. So our ellipse stays in the same size. Now I'm going to copy this ellipse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them by the curves. So these two curves and a point. And we're going to use the tangent constraint along there. And you can see how those have attached. We can see how that's following that curve along there. So this is good for making such things as chains or linkages, etc. So that's just do another copy. Place that there. So the two curves and the point. And do the tangent. So now they're linked together like so. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site. You can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.